All right, I know this seems a little bit clickbaity, but it is true. I quit the airlines. I honestly feel a bit embarrassed to make this video, and that's primarily because some of the YouTube videos I've made in the past. Um, I made a five-part series on my time up in Infinity Flight School, and then I made a two-part series on how to pack as an airline pilot. In fact, the second video that I made on that how to pack series, which was about my roller bag, I actually released that about a week after I quit the regional airlines. I felt a little sheepish because people would ask how things were going or you know, if I had updated anything on my packing, what kind of trips I was getting, and I'd have to kind of let them know, like, hey, I'm not doing it anymore. In terms of quitting the airlines, I get asked three somewhat predictable questions and I want to answer those first prior to getting into anything else. The first question I get asked is, was it because of COVID? Yes and no. No in the sense that I was not furloughed. I did not lose my job. I did take a sizable amount of paid and unpaid leave during that time. Um, but I always knew that travel would re eventually resume. Like we would get back to where we needed to be. I say yes, it was partially due to COVID because I was home more with my family and I was able to spend a lot of time with them and I realized how much more I just wanted to be home. The second question I get asked is, was it your employer that caused you to quit? And the answer is no. Uh, I worked for SkyWest Airlines. I can say that now that I don't work for them anymore. And I can tell you that for every bad thing that you can say about SkyWest, you can say two or three good things about them. They were really good to me. I enjoyed working for them. Um, my goal was never to stay at a regional, but I will say in terms of working for a regional airline, I think they're one of the best. And then the last question I would always get asked is, was it a check ride or medical failure? And the answer to that is no, I've never failed a check ride so far, knock on wood and I am fully medically qualified to fly. So getting all those out of the way, you might ask, why did you walk then? I subscribe to this idea of tears of difficulty, and that's not to be confused with physical tears, like crying tears. <laughs> what I'm talking about is levels of difficulty. And what I specifically mean by that are events in your life, which when compounded, make this job more difficult. And I feel like I can demonstrate this thought with a graphical representation. Now bear in mind, this is my own personal metric. It is not based on any kind of empirical data, but it is based on experience, what I saw in the airlines. And if one is the easiest and 10 is the most difficult, I would say that every single pilot out there fits into the spectrum somehow or somewhere. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. The first level or tier, the easiest level, is the single pilot, male or female, old or young, does not matter. If you are a single pilot, the airlines are for you. The reason for that is you can move anywhere you want, you can live in base, that means you can pick up extra time, work extra days, and you can take full advantage of all the travel benefits that the airlines offer you. And of course, I would say the biggest thing is you don't have any kind of like financial obligations other than supporting yourself. The next level that would be only slightly more difficult would be if you were married or you had a significant other who did not work. This is only slightly more difficult because now you have one more person that you have to consider and you may not be able to move anywhere you want because maybe that person's family is tied to where you live now and maybe you won't be able to take all the travel advantages that you could if you were a single pilot. The next tier up from that would be the pilot who has a spouse or a significant other who does work. Being a pilot in this industry is now a little bit more difficult because now you have another work schedule that you have to worry about. Now the minute you factor a kid or multiple kids into the situation, your life is much more difficult and that's really specifically for two working parents. If you have a stay-at-home spouse, your life as an airline pilot is not that difficult because they are managing the household. Once again, you might not be able to travel as much and you'll probably miss a lot of like calendar events for your kids, but it's not that bad. But if you both work and you have a kid or kids, your life is so much more difficult. Like I would, I would put that somewhere between a four and seven on my little tiers of difficulty chart. And then the more kids you have, and I found that the older they get, the more difficult life becomes too because now you have extracurricular activities, you have sports, you have school events, all of that, plus you're trying to manage two work schedules. It just becomes more difficult. Now in my wife's and my particular situation, we both essentially worked shift work. 
she was working in an emergency room and she would get her schedule about a month prior to the working month starting. And I was of course working for the regional airlines and I would get my schedule about 10 to 12 days prior to the working month beginning. And it was rough. As soon as my schedule would hit, we would have to sit down and coordinate all the childcare and daycare for our three kids for that month. And I remember one month in particular, we had them in daycare part-time throughout the week. We had five babysitters on call and then we had Ashley's parents and my parents filling in the gaps like on weekends and things like that just to cover down on the three kids being cared for. Oh, by the way, my wife was pregnant with our fourth kid. Now I can easily say that we were probably like a level eight in my little tiers of difficulty chart. And in fact, I would say the only thing more difficult than us, like the nine and 10 would be if you were say two pilots um, working in this industry with kids, I don't know how you do that in terms of spending quality time, not only with your kids, but with each other. And then also if you were say, I would say like the level 10 would be if you were a single male or female with multiple kids trying to work in this industry, I just, I don't know how you make it work. And I'm sure there are people out there doing it and honestly my hat is off to you because I don't know how you do it. So based off of this little level of difficulty and where we were in our lives, it just seemed like getting out of the airlines was probably best for our family. Now on top of these tiers of difficulty, there were a couple other reasons I did decide to get out. In part four of my five part series on Infinity Flight School, I talked about how in order to choose what airline you should go to, you should establish a negotiable versus non-negotiable list. Now I still believe that is a very accurate way to determine what airline to go to, but understand that I did that video prior to actually being an airline pilot. In that video, I put commuting on my negotiable list. Whereas I stand by everything else in that video, I would now put commuting more on my non-negotiable list. It's terrible. Now here's what primarily stinks about this whole commuting thing. Let's say that I would have an 11 a.m. showtime in Chicago. That's a great showtime if you live in base. Now the first flight from Atlanta to Chicago that would leave just about every day was at 6.15 a.m. and I knew that I was gonna make that flight almost 100% of the time. Now, if I took a flight anytime after that, say like from 7 a.m. to about 10 a.m., my chances of making the flight decrease significantly because now I'm not only competing against the majority of people who wanna fly because they don't wanna get up super early, but I'm also competing against all these other pilots who are more senior to me that wanna sleep in and not have to get up super early and make their commute into Chicago. So what that would mean in terms of timeline is that I would have to get up at about 4 a.m. I would leave the house at 4.30 a.m. I would get to the airport at about 5.45 a.m. By the time I parked and got through security, it was about 5.55 or 6 a.m. I would board the flight at 6.15, or we would leave at 6.15, I should say, and then I would take the hour and 45 minute flight up to Chicago. We would lose an hour, so I would get there sometime at around seven in the morning. Now bear in mind, I don't get paid for any of that commuting time. And Let's say that my show time on my first day was at 7 a.m. Now technically, I could probably make it, but if anything went wrong with the plane in Atlanta, I was gonna be late. And so the easy thing to do would be to go up the night prior, get a hotel, and obviously be able to make my show time. Well, I had to pay for that hotel out of my own pocket now. Now, because for some reason, pilots love cliche phrases. There's someone out there that's gonna sit there and say, have you considered being more senior so you don't have to do all that? Or have you considered maybe moving into base so you don't have to go through all that turmoil? Yeah. I don't know, my only answer to that is, have you considered that maybe you're stupid? The point is this, I did not like commuting and it just did not work well in my situation. The best way I can sum it up is this, I got really good at commuting, but I never got good at managing the anxiety of commuting. If I can just offer you one piece of unsolicited advice, do your best to not have to commute. All right, just got to the hotel. Six hours and 13 minutes. Now granted, that is a little bit long. All right, really quick, I wanna compare that commute that you just saw to the commute that I'm doing in my current job right now. I work on the third floor of this building right here. So, not too bad of a commute. Now the last reason I got out of the airlines was really the unpredictability of the schedule. 
And honestly, this is just the nature of the job. It's just something that you'll have to get used to, but it's just not something that I really ever got used to. You know, you may not be able to get all three of those days off that you absolutely need for that month, or you might have to plan everything towards the back end of the month with your family just because you have a higher chance of trading trips with other people to get a little bit more time off or the days off that you need. Or maybe, you know, two of your trips, you can't commute to or from work, so you have to get a hotel the, the night prior or the day after the trip ends and it extends your time just a little bit more. It just was not an ideal situation for my family and me. Now, I understand that all of this seems maybe a bit depressing, but my goal is not to dissuade anyone from going to the airlines or to talk badly about the airlines. I made a personal choice that worked for my family and me, but I can assure you that the airline industry is an incredible place to be right now. The demand for pilots right now is awesome. So if you're a young up and coming pilot in a four year degree program or at a local flight school trying to get your hours so that you can one day become an airline pilot, or let's say you're a former military guy with four kids trying to make this whole you know airline industry thing work, the world is your oyster right now. Now, the last thing I'll say is this, there is always an ebb and flow within the airline industry, but it is still considered a very honorable profession. If you stick with it, you can stand to make a lot of money and it is a ton of fun. So for all my aspiring aviators or airline pilots out there, best of luck to you. Keep the rubber side down and hopefully we'll see you in the sky soon. That's all I've got. You know, I, I forgot to mention this. I do mean that about seeing you in the sky soon. Um, my wife actually got a new job a few months ago, and so now our tier of difficulty level has actually come down quite a bit, so I have decided to actually get back in to flying. Uh, a couple months ago, I applied for a position and was accepted. What company is that, you might ask? Well, I will be flying very soon for...